what you know about PE fitness. A more in-depth look on Dylan Jamelli's business. The number one channel for performance enhancement. They need more education. Searching for muscle advance. Can't learn it from a book or a pamphlet. Tune in for the answers, cause your body's too precious. What's up, brother? What's going on? So we wanted to talk about the controversy out there. I mean, Dil Dylan's been in the game longer than I have. Dylan, how long have you been in the game? 2011, so okay. yeah, almost 15 years, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going on nine or 10 years now. Yeah. So, and we see it, it happening, like, right? You have Cody Copa right here. He's saying he's 14 years old. Is he really 14 years old? A lot of people believe the internet should always second guess the internet, probably, right? Is he 14? I don't know. Maybe we'll find out. Maybe we won't. A lot. Of, we also have a lot of young people on Enhance. Dylan's part of Enhance. He's an athlete with Enhance Labs, makes tons of content with us. Been in the game, been in the SARM industry, peptide industry, um, supplement industry. He's with Enhance full time. So he's seen it. It was really not a, a common thing, I think, so much, right? No. 10 years ago, you didn't see a lot of teenagers using SARMs, using steroids. It was kind of like a, it was a rarity where right. now it's almost almost an everyday thing. Dylan, when you see kids like Cody and some of these other kids, what do you think? Let's first start with why are they getting into it now? What are the disadvantages of it? And what are the pros? Basically things like TikTok, for example, once that comes around and it's kind of based on younger influencers and people, one thing about the younger generation when it comes to things like TikTok, Instagram, social media in general, they know how to make stuff that pops. Like they know the tricks that even even some of us don't know. Correct. So on, on that aspect, you have to give them a ton of credit because they know how to get the crowds. They know how to get the people watching the negative side. They do so in a fashion that is generally, not always, but generally it's, it's not the right way to do things. And a lot of the information getting passed around is bad, dangerous, negative, and they're, they're glorifying things without ever talking. You'll, you'll, a lot of these younger guys, you'll never see them talk about any of the bad parts of it. You know, we already live in a society of tell me what I want to hear. Don't tell me what I need to hear. Don't ever criticize me. Don't do this. Don't do that. Just tell me what I want to hear when I want to hear it. So when you wanting to hear something and you ask a hundred people, just so you get that one that'll tell you what you want to hear, you feel like you can do it. And I think with the ability now of people having more reach, when I started doing videos, you know, at the time, it was one of those things that nobody was wanting to touch. And I was willing to do it to branch myself out and do something different, take the risks associated with it in terms of getting banned, getting, you know, people looking at me in a weird way. Now it's like, shit, that's everywhere, right? I mean, it's everywhere. Yeah, everybody wants to talk about steroids, storms, peptides, and, and there's people that are really smart and people that don't know their ass from a hole in the ground. It's, it's, there's, and then there's in-betweens that kind of do, but kind of don't, right? The problem is, is the prevalence of bad information outweighs the good information, right? So yeah. like, you know, when I did it, when Tony did it, like in our prime, 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 there wasn't, you could sift through it easy. You know how now, like for, let's just use a SARMs comparison. There's a new SARM company that'll come out every week. If you look online, like literally they're popping up left and right, but people doing videos, it wasn't like that, man. It's no, there was you and Tony, Rich Piana, a couple of people that really started the whole entire thing. And honestly, everything is modeled really after what you guys did originally but going back with the negatives my fear is too i see it on my tiktok constantly i get questions and my instagram and my tiktok every day uh should i do this how should i do it what are the the pros and the cons and i think that's what everybody's doing they're looking at what's out there and they're just asking random people what i should do or asking your best friend like and i think there's a lot of danger that comes along with it now if you're an 18 22 year old kid and we're not condoning this not medical advice whatsoever just our opinions on this you have a, a professional coach that knows what he's doing knows the insides and the outs following your lab work properly doing things safe and effectively and possibly you're still on a young age who knows what the long-term health effects could be we don't know there's a lot of negatives that can go along with you could mess up your fertility the rest of your life you could really just screw up your whole entire endocrine system mess with your pu puberty a lot of the, the acme is another big one gyno is another big one with it there's a lot of negatives that can happen now, when it comes to possible, there's always a flip side to everything, right? And like I had mentioned, we have a couple of kids that are 18 to 20 on Enhance. They're doing things. You put it like Mo, our editor will put it up there. Ethan, who Greg Doucette's done tons of videos on him. Now, Greg Doucette did a video on him, bash this kid. Of course. Of All course. right. Still, 
No, it made the kid look like a fool in front of the thousands of followers that he has. You know, Dylan. I mean, uh, I mean, um, Greg. Like, out of all the fans he has, made this kid, blasted this kid, pretended to be his friend. Hey, how you doing? I love your content. I'm Greg said I have no testicles. Yeah. You know, talks in a high pitch cookbook, like whatever. The, yeah. Pretending to be his friend. Then makes a video and bashes his acne. You want to talk about a negative. Greg, what happens if that kid just went and jumped off a bridge because you're making fun of his acne? Talk real life, right? Real life. What happens if that kid used to be a scrawny individual, puny, you know, extremely skinny, maybe didn't have a lot of security, maybe had extreme bouts of depression. All of a sudden, he's jacked out of his mind. He's got tons of confidence. His bloodline, his blood works in proper. And he's feeling 10, 20 times better than he ever did. That could be a pro for him. Maybe blows up. He's making tons of money. His health's in good shape. You know, what do you think? Any Is there any possible pros for people doing it at that age or no? Because I know back in the day, like when you go into the forums, when you were running the forums, that you were always advised, like, be like, don't touch this shit. Like, mm-hmm. don't, you know, if there was a lot of like, you're always very conservative with things. Yeah. Let me, you think kids in their 20s, in their in their late teens, should just stay away from it completely? Yeah. Let me say one quick thing about the whole Greg situation, and then I'll, I'm going to answer that in great detail because I want to get into it. So with him, for one thing I don't do, I've never done, you can go back in all of my videos. The only time I've ever talked about anybody, I did a video recently about my favorite influencers. But other than that, like, I don't find it good, wise, anything in between to make videos video specifically on one person like to bash the shit out of them news update okay talk about like yeah, I'll, news I'll, update. yeah. you know like i did one on john jones using t-ball one time news update right i did the one on connor news update certainly said a lot of good things about bash. when you have to make video content to specifically bash somebody it says a lot about your character and why people should never listen to you just let me say that about him i have no i've never talked to greg don't know him personally but just based on the stuff i've seen i don't see one good thing about him. Now, with what you said, okay, so first, over this period of time that I've been doing this, I have encountered thousands and thousands and thousands of people. And I coach people and uh, I've done professional athletes. I do everyday regular people, people that have, you know, mental issues with their diet, whatever. I've done it all. The number one problem that I come across that I get the far, like I would say like 60 to 70% of all of these people I deal with are all in their 40s, 50s. It's almost it's an ongoing thing. This is why I'm so passionate about my what I'm going to get into. I use steroids or I use this too young and now I'm completely ruined and the quality of life is gone. Really? Okay. And because I've seen that so much and because I'm very spiritual on top of it and I feel like, okay, I was given a platform. I need to use this platform. There's a reason I was given the platform, right? Yeah, There's a reason sure. you have gifts you have in your life that I have in mind that we all have. If you don't use the gifts you have for the reason God gave them to you, they're going to get taken. That is true. And what I have always done is I always tell people and you can go and people laugh. My line is I'm not your fucking dad. I'm not telling you what you can and can't do or what what i'm telling you the basic facts of how this is period you do what you want with it from there i'm not going to lose sleep over it either way i'll sleep good knowing i told you the right thing so the right thing the wrong thing that's for you as a person to judge i just know this when you're in your 20s like early 20s teens there's a lot of things that you think a you're never going to want or you're just not thinking about so kids for instance i don't know about you but if you asked me if i was going to have kids in my early 20s my answer would have been hell no don't talk to me about that whatever well guess what when you meet somebody that you're probably going to fall in love with, get married. Your wife's going to want kids. Chances are like in the high 90%. And you're probably going to want to too. This is just one small, small thing. Then what happens like for me when I went to the the fertility clinic and have no sperm count, zero, no matter how many times, nothing I could do. And there's some other mitigating factors for me. And I, we were older, but I've seen this time and time again. Well, what about as you get into your thirties, forties, you start getting nagging injuries because you put so much pressure on your ligaments, tendons, you weren't developed properly. You're just injured after injury after injury how's your quality of life you know what about the the certain the one million trillion percent certainty that you're going to be on trt forever injecting twice a week every single week for the rest of your life having to go through insurance having to get it illegally potentially ups and downs maybe you're using too much and that's causing health problems well what if you have some sort of other problem that doesn't allow you to use testosterone because that can happen so you're going to yeah. live on natural test boosters the rest of your life with a hypogonadal condition no, you're not. Yeah, you, know, you can't take Clomid forever. Those drugs are not meant for that purpose. You no, it's 
sides too with them. Yeah, there's another issue. There's there's legality issues that whatever that that's here nor there. But let me tell you something. You've seen this, Rob, and and Tony will attest to this, and anybody that knows shit will attest to this. How many young guys do we see just dying? It's way too young. Yeah, really young. And I and I ask these guys this. Okay, you go get your your whole thing is well. I need to do all this so I can get a pro card. Okay, cool. So let me ask you this: What, what are you gonna do in your forties and your fifties? But 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 what does the pro card do for you aside from you saying you have a pro card? Because let me tell you something. Not I was a, I was a fashion model, and I thought, oh, I'm the shit. I'm this and that. And guess what? One percent out of the the very small percent that make it that actually make any money. So great, I'm a model. So what? So I learned in a year that so what? I'm losing money, and then I and then so you go and do all that, then you're losing money, you're losing your health. But hey, you can post online. You got a fucking pro card. So you ruined your life for what? And so if you ask me what are the pros or cons, I can make you a list a mile long of cons. Pros, if you want to look at it from an objective point of view, might get a ton of followers on social media. It might land you maybe a couple sponsorships, maybe, you know, some notoriety, you know, and who knows, maybe if you're in that small, tiny bit percent, you make some money. But in the long run, is it worth it? Like these people that, oh, I need to gain 30 pounds on cycle. Okay, what happens when the cycle's over and you lose all that water weight, terrible time either with estrogen or recovery, lose it all and then screw up your health in the process and gain nothing and actually lose in the end. But you looked good for 10 weeks. Okay. I like your points a lot. And I think I think my conclusion to this whole thing, great video, great rundown. People are going to do what they want to do. Oh yeah. People are still going to do it at a young age. Make sure you're doing it as, if there is a word for as safe as possible. Labs are being done. You're being professionally guided. You're not being reckless. My end take on it is I'm glad I started in my 30s. Yep. Lost 125 pounds. Wasn't doing it in my 20s. Continue to get it better in shape in my 40s. I think I'm going to prime out in my 50s. I, I really do. Like, yeah. that's that's my plan. Mm -hmm. like, I think I'm going to be jacked in my 50s. Like, there's not even a question about it. I think let your body naturally naturally get where it's supposed to be. Diet, exercise, training. Get into your late 20s, late 30s as a male when you start to slow down. Start to, you know, then maybe then, then start thinking about it. Because then, you know, by then you've already packed on all these natural pounds and, and these yes. muscles and stuff like that. People are going to do what they want to do. They can. That's everybody's right to do. Absolutely. Make sure you're doing it safe and effectively. Make sure you're getting your information from reliable sources. Make sure you're getting everything from reliable sources. And uh, this could, we could turn into 50 videos, but we're, we'll end it now. And, and thanks, Dylan. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, and We bro. appreciate it, man. You got it, bro. Peace out, everybody. See you guys.